Hi, my name is Greg Charvat, call sign N8 VR1, and I'd like to share with you a single side band 20 meter band transceiver that I designed and built from scratch. Uh, the motivation behind this project uh, was brought about by watching YouTube videos of other hands who have uh, designed and built their own single side band transceivers, and watching those uh, videos uh, inspired me to build one of my own. Uh, I want to show you uh, the front of this radio here. Uh, as you can see, it's um, quite large because it is homebrew, and so you want to leave a lot of room for all the fabrication modifications that you can make. Starting uh, down the lower left-hand corner, we have the po input power cord, which is simply a computer power cord and a computer power entry module. Moving this way, we see the main power switch right there. Uh, shown here is the main power on indicator, light bulb, not LEDs of course. And here is the low and high power switch, the manual transmit switch, and the tune button which transmits a side tone carrier at maximum power. The high power setting here is about 40 watts uh, peak interval power and low is a watt and a half. Moving this way across the radio we see the uh, tuning dial which is right here. And the band is dead at the moment, but I'll turn around and you can see it from here. There's quite a bit of QRM right now. Okay, moving this way, this is the uh, headphone jack. This is the microphone, which is an old Motorola police microphone. And uh, up here we see the signal meter, and it also doubles as the transmit uh, RF voltage meter. And coming across the radio this way, we see the RF gain control, the drive level, the antenna connection, and up here you see two um, plates here. These are just fake plates. They're from old military surplus gear. This one looks very cool looking and fits the radio and this one here warns you about high voltage that may or may not be in sight. The reason why I put these plates up here was to cover the holes that were inside this aluminum chassis. This chassis is a recycled uh, auto desk computer chassis probably from the 80s at some point. And it makes a very nice radio chassis. Next I will show you the inside of the radio. Okay, here's the front of the radio again just so you can see. I pulled off the rear cover and now I'm going to show you the inside of the radio. This is a modular design using uh, little bud uh, boxes, BNC connectors and so on. If uh, we start here on the left you can see the power amplifier which is uh, mounted on the back of this big heat sink and in there is the power amplifier circuitry. The power amplifier uh, connects into the driver slash LNA module right there. Uh, there's a little low pass filter which goes into the power amplifier to drive down the spur level. That's the front end mixer. This is the VFO. This is the bi-directional IF amplifier. This is the BFO. Uh, this is the product detector. Back here is the AF board. There's the speaker. And this is the automatic gain control board. Uh, and of course there's all the DC wiring and fuses and in the back here is a power one linear power supply that powers the whole radio and here is the front cover uh, inside if you can see the meter uh, some of the wiring harnesses and controls and so on and so forth that is the inside of the radio <laughs> November 8, Zulu, Radio Yankee. November 8, Zulu, Yankee. November 8, Zulu, Yankee. Uh, it's November 8, Zulu, Radio Yankee. Uh, the name here is Greg. I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. November 8, Zulu, Radio Yankee. Greg in Boston. Good morning to you. F4, T8, N4CAT, this is N8ZRY. Um, you have an excellent signal yourself. You are 5 by 9 into Boston. Uh, the name here is Greg Golf, Romeo Echo Golf. And 
I'm, uh, I'm testing out a home uh, brew radio this morning, so I'm glad you came back to me. That means everything's working. <laughs> back to you, N4TAP. You don't hear very many home brews out the air anymore. You just don't hear very many. Greg is doing great. Good loud audio. Good signal. Tell me about that home brew, Greg. Go ahead. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's, uh, I built it um, out of uh, a lot of, I designed it from scratch, and I built it out of ham fest parts, and uh, the front panel looks like um, looks like it was built in the 30s or 40s, but the inside is all solid state, uh, low noise, um, you know, uh, low noise oscillators, low noise amplifiers, uh, MOSFET uh, transmit section and all that. I've had it on the air a few times over the past few weeks, but I keep, um, I had some problems blowing up the transmitter MOSFET. So, uh, so if I jump off the air unexpectedly, I had a radio problem. Um, so don't, so forgive me there. Back to you, N4TAT, this is N8ZRY. Okay, N8ZRY, what is the Yes, the uh, the output power right now is uh, it's 40 watts uh, peak envelope power. I'm using a uh, Maycom uh, DU2880 MOSFET. It's a dual MOSFET. Uh, it's actually a new uh, MOSFET chip, but I picked it up at a local ham fest for ten dollars. And the microphone is an old Motorola police microphone. Uh, back to you, N4TAT and 8 zry Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I'm using uh, just using a half wave dipole uh, for tuned for uh, 20 meters since this is the only band the radio can function at. Um, and the dipole is maybe uh, one end of it's probably 25 feet above ground, and the other might be uh, 12 feet above ground. And, and that's about it. Um, earlier this morning, I talked to a gentleman in Portugal with this radio, and during the, um, the single sideband contest on Sunday, I, I talked to someone in India and the Ukraine and all over the world. I think 40, 40 watts is just enough to get out there. Just enough to get out there. Back to you, N4TAT and A Z R Y. The, the, one of the biggest struggles I've had with this radio project is building the power amplifiers. So I could learn a lot from you um, on that. Uh, the radio, it, you know what, it just takes time. you got to start with, uh, I started with the IF amplifier first and then worked my way up. Uh, I've made the product detector, then the front end mixer, then the front end VFO, then the audio board, and the ABC circuit, and then the LNAs, the drivers. I sort of you know,